Okay, let's do another example. Let's evaluate the indefinite integral of log of x cubed over x dx. Now this doesn't look immediately like a product to me. It looks like a quotient. Well, a quotient is really just a product of one function and it's reciprocal, so it really is a product. But this might not immediately scream to you product, so you might not immediately think of substitution on account of there being a product here. However, there is composition. We have the function natural log of x being raised to the third power. So log of x is the inside function, the third power is the outside function. So that suggests that we do want to try a substitution here, and specifically we want to let u be equal to the natural log of x, because that's what's inside. Well, then du is going to be the derivative of natural log is 1 over x times dx. Now sometimes you might want to rewrite the integral to help you see what's going on. This is the integral of the natural log of x cubed times 1 over x dx. Dividing by x is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over x. Hey, look, that is precisely du. Natural log of x is u. 1 over x dx is equal to du. So this becomes the integral of u cubed du. And now I can just apply the power rule, which says increase the power by 1. I get u to the fourth power. Divide by the new power, which is 4. And just for good form, I put a plus c. And finally, we want to get rid of the variable u, because u is not our variable from the original problem, natural log of x is, well, x is our original variable, and u is natural log of x, so this gives us the natural log of x to the fourth power divided by 4 plus c. I encourage you each time to check your answer by taking a derivative. And pretty much every time that you do a substitution and then you take the derivative, because substitution is pretty much the opposite of the chain rule, you should have to use the chain rule at some point. So you should have to use the chain rule at some point when doing this. So I encourage you to go ahead, take the derivative of this, see what you get. All right, let's try another example. Let's evaluate the integral of x cubed times e to the x to the fourth plus two power dx. Now, I see a product. I see a function composition. That suggests substitution is what I should try. And furthermore, I've got x to the fourth plus two uh, inside of the exponential function. So that suggests that a good substitution would be u equal to whatever is in the exponent, which is x to the four plus two. So then I evaluate du, and I get the derivative of x to the four is four x cubed. The derivative of two is zero. So I'm left with four x cubed dx. Now, look, I don't have four x cubed dx. I just have x cubed dx. Is that a huge issue? No. It turns out that I can divide both sides by four. These cancel. I'm left with one quarter du is equal to x cubed dx. So this right here is one quarter du, the x cubed and the dx, whereas the x to the four plus two is u. So this becomes e to the u times one quarter du. And so I can pull out the one quarter and I'm just integrating e to the u du. The antiderivative of e to the u is, is itself. So I get one quarter e to the u plus c. So this is equal to one quarter e to the x to the four plus two plus c. Just let's do this explicitly, let's check to check our answers, we'll take the derivative 
of 1 quarter e x to the 4 plus 2. And I have 1 quarter, the chain rule says, take the derivative of the outside function, which is the exponential function, whose derivative is itself. Leave the inside alone. Great. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 4x cubed. 1 quarter and 4 cancel. I'll put the x cubed first, and I get x cubed times e x to the 4 plus 2. Great. That's exactly what I started with. Okay, I'd like to show an example where more than one substitution is possible. And so let's try this out. We've got the integral of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 1 dx. Now really sort of the straightforward way of doing this example is to set u equal to x squared plus 1, which is the thing underneath the radical here. And to note that upstairs we have the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x. So if I let u be x squared plus 1, du is 2x dx, there's my du, and I've got u under the radical here, so this becomes the integral of 1 over the square root of u du. Now the square root of u is the 1 half power, and since it's in the denominator, I get u to the minus 1 half. I integrate this using the power rule. I add 1 to 1 half to get u to the 1 half. I divide by the new power, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2, and I add c. Finally, I replace u with x squared plus 1, and I replace 1 half with the square root to get 2 root x squared plus 1 plus c. However, there's another substitution that works. And why would you think to do this one? Frankly, I don't think you would, but at least this illustrates that there's not always one way of doing these problems. And also sometimes if you look at an integral and you don't know what to do with it, it's worth it for you to just take maybe pieces of it and try to use those as a substitution and then see what happens. So here, I decide to let u be the entire denominator, the square root of x squared plus 1. Let's see what happens. I'm going to rewrite it as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half to help me take its derivative. So then du is the derivative of this, which you can compute is x times x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half dx. This x comes from the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x, but then this 1 half power comes down which cancels out the 2. We've reduced this power by 1 to get that. And I can rewrite this as x over the square root of x squared plus 1. But notice that's pretty much the whole integral here. x over the square root of x squared plus 1, I just have 2 times that. So this is everything but the 2. So I replace everything here with du, except for the 2. So my integral becomes the integral of 2 du, which just becomes 2u plus c. And I replace u with the square root of x squared plus 1, and I get 2 root x squared plus 1 plus c. Same thing. Check that out. Here's question 1. Evaluate the integral of sine of x, cosine of x, dx. I'd like to note that there are really two ways of doing this. 